Hello everyone, my name is Sven and welcome to a brand new base build video. Now, I haven't uploaded for a while, I know. And I haven't uploaded base build videos for a while. And I've also mentioned many times before that I'm back. Let me not give you any excuses, I'm just super busy these days. Although I do agree, it's time for some new base build videos. So here we are, enjoy the video. This video is sponsored by RustClash.com. RustClash is a unique Rust gambling website because of their special game modes. You can open cases, but you can also do case battles with other people or with your friends. My personal favorite is the Plinko game mode, where you can win up to a thousand times of your bet. Go to RustClash.com and use code SVEN to get three free cases to start with. They also have a rain feature where you can basically win free credits. Once again, thank you to RustClash for sponsoring today's video. Please gamble responsibly. Now before we get into the actual video, just as always, there will be timestamps linked in the description. At any moment in the video, if you want to skip ahead, feel free to. Now this base design isn't particularly insane or anything crazy, although for many reasons I actually do really really like this base design. Summed up, the costs to build this base and the upkeep aren't anything crazy high. On top of that, it has a core 3x3, which is very easy to build. And other than that, going forward with the base building, it's fairly easy to just build and put down the base. You don't have to do any hassle with going out a million triangles and back and doing any multi-TC stuff. This is just one solid base. It does have takeover TCs, it does have wide gaps, because that is just super overpowered in the current Rust meta. But other than that, it doesn't have any crazy complicated things. And that's what makes this base really nice. Now, I'm going to give you guys a tour of the base. But before that, let's talk about some practical things. I'm going to talk about the build costs for this base and the upkeep. With that, I will also explain how the footprint works. And after that, I will give you a tutorial on how to build it. This 3x3 is nothing like the normal 3x3s you would see around. The main mindset that I had designing this base was something refreshing. I wanted to make something new, something different and something unique. Because, let's be real, everyone is tired of seeing the same bases all around. Everyone is tired of seeing like the 3x3 rings type stuff. And in my opinion, there's so much more and so much more unique things you can do, even to a 3x3. Now my way of going with this base was to make it as cheap and easy to build as possible. I do got to mention though, it is kind of a base for a larger group, especially when you just look at the base. You definitely can see it's um, it looks like a clan base, as, as some of you would say. Um, and it, it kind of is. It features a lot of space for bedrooms, which is very nice. But then again, it is pretty cheap to build compared to like a normal 3x3 ring. This base features a bunch of things that I used to do in my old base designs as well, but also some new things, especially the inner shoots. Um, there's definitely some unique things there that I want to showcase and that this base has, which make this base really, really nice. I will show that in the tour later on in this video. Now, speaking of group size, which I already mentioned a bit, I would say this is the perfect base you build when you're between a four and a six man and you're actively playing of course if you don't want to do anything too crazy this is the base to build because you can build it out of a three by three starter and you should only build this base if you expect to be online rated and if that's your playstyle. other than that it's not worth the upkeep and build costs if you don't play like that now, to a minimum on vanilla i would say unless you're an active four man lower than that i would not go uh, the nice thing is you could even build this base when you're like 16 deep because there is a lot of space for bedrooms Which makes it a very nice now. Let's talk about upkeep and build costs before that Let me explain one thing real quick I always try to make my viewers come up with their own design choices And so the bases that you guys build from my youtube videos should not always be one-on-one -on -one the same Please be creative and apply your own ideas. With that said, generally speaking, there's two big variants you can build this base. One is the minimal variant and one is the total variant. The total variant is what's featured in this video and hence the most expensive base because everything is upgraded to the material it should be in and it features all the extra stuff the base has. The minimal version is a bit simpler, less stuff upgraded and less features overall, but still good. 
Hence, reason why it's cheaper. Speaking of build costs, for the total configuration, you would need about 100,000 metal frags, 1,000 HUM, and 80k stone to finish this base entirely. For the minimal version, you need a little bit less. 80,000 metal frags, 400 HUM, but a bit more stone as more stuff stays stone in that sense, which is 100,000. Now continuing with the upkeep, it's actually very manageable because of the wide gaps. For the total configuration, we're talking about 17,000 metal frags, 250 HQM and 15k stone on the main TC. Then on the two externals with the jump shoots, so that's two of them, 1400 metal frags, 1300 stone and 5 HQM. And for the two externals that don't have those shoots, 1400 metal frags and 250 stone. Making it about 19,000 metal frags, 250 HQM and 17k stone total to upkeep this base per day. For the minimal version, it's a little bit less. It's about 16,000 metal frags, 100 HQM and 21k stone to upkeep the base every day. I do gotta say though, because part of the base is done on the externals for the wide cap, they are super, super cheap individually. You can easily fill them up with a couple K metal and a couple K stone and not have to worry about the upkeep on that for days, if not weeks. Speaking of practical things, one thing I'd like to mention is that for the compound, you would need about 20 walls and four gates total to seal it in. Now, let me show you guys this base before anything else. From the outside, it does look like a big base and it is a three by three ring. Although it's not a normal three by three ring. It's actually a lot cheaper because a normal three by three ring has a double layer of peak downs. This one has only a single layer, making it definitely a lot cheaper. Now, what I like from this base the most, if you're just looking from the outside, is the wide gaps. Basically, everything you need to do online raid defense in this base, as you can see from the outside. But let's go inside. Compound, as you can see, I've introduced the ways in on the corners rather than in the middle, uh, making door rating more expensive. And also, it just fits better for this footprint. So going into the base. Opening the door, you'll notice where I have two doors. This is kind of like the airlock area. We have this door right here, which leads to a chute, which we'll get back to in a second. And this door right here, which leads into a airlock, which leads into the outer ring. As you can see, it is a three by three in the inside, literally just the inner ring instead of the outer ring as well, which you would normally see with three by three rings. What you'll notice as well is that I've segmented the peak downs, making this base a bit stronger for rocket raiding, leaving raiders forced to only enter through one side if these garages are closed, of course. What you also notice is that there's no direct way in on the bottom floor. I didn't like that because it's a bit weak in my opinion now these ladder hatches could be a bit unpractical if you are playing in a deep group and so you could just have furnaces here but either way you can go up in both sides this side and the other side there's some dropbox space and this is basically the second floor of the three by three and if we go down we basically go into the main area of the base now going in here it's basically a normal three by three but we have this jump down right here now going up uh, we're going to the third floor of the three by three and here's already some bedrooms. I like to have early bedrooms because it allows you to have uh, or to, to be prepared for early raid defenses. And what you notice as well is that I've changed quite a bit on compared to a normal 3x3. I've actually used roofs here, creating peaks into our inner peaks. And these peaks are actually very slim. Um, it's really, really hard for raiders to spot you even and to shoot back at you because of all the uh, coverage you have behind here. And you have an extra peek into here. Now continuing, I actually realized I accidentally didn't include the ways up in this exact build, but the ways up are on the edges here, just like the uh, ways down or the ways up in from the uh, outer ring. Now we jump up and we immediately get to the inner peaks. And you notice once again, these peaks right there are pretty hard to look into. Going around here for the rest, it's 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 a very open mobile area. And that is because I like I like when the peak downs are open and not too, too clumped. You could put walls here uh, or low walls and then build that up. But it just makes this whole area uh, a lot a lot smaller and tighter. And it's, it's just not nice. Now you notice a couple of things. That on each corner, there's these two doors. There's the single door and the double door. Now the single door leads to the uh, chute, which leads to the front door. But then again, you know, if you go down this one, you actually notice that this is not a front door as the front door is only on two corners and not on all four. Now, this one is a bedroom that's on the bottom of the peaks that also functions as an airlock, technically. Now, this one also goes into a chute. So there's four chutes, but only 
two of them are uh, from the front door. Now going back to the front door right here and going into the chute again and then going up into the peak downs. What you'll notice as well is this extra door in the chutes, which leads basically to a empty room. This one is on all four sides. You could put batteries here. I would put batteries here. But then again, um, I don't really like to feature that in the videos because it can make the design really weak if you to know where your batteries are. So going back to the shoots and going up, we're going back to the uh, peak downs and we have this double door right here. With two garage doors actually. And then we have the singular bedrooms right here, one and one right here. And that goes on all four sides, making it a total of eight bedrooms. And that's what I would recommend for you to, um, to build the space if you're about an eight man or less. You could easily build this base if you're trying. Now continuing, you wonder where the hell is the way up? The way up actually continues into the chute. So if you notice on every chute, there is a ladder hatch going up. What's so nice about these chutes, all four of them, is that they lead directly into the roof peak. And this makes your peak downs or your peaks onto the roof and your base so freaking mobile, it's insane. Also, what's extremely important, even more important for this, a lot of bases these days, everyone knows it, getting top down. People rocketing out your turrets, landing on the roof, and then just sending a million rockets into the roof of your base. Now, obviously, raiders are never gonna get, uh, are, are never gonna blow these four peaks on the side. I have actually six in total, but we'll talk about that in a second. They're never gonna blow these, if, especially not if they're top downing and they're offline ready. And they'll never get to them. They'll never get to them the way, the way this space is built. And for example, we go to this bedroom right here, which has its own chute, basically. You can always get access to the roof without passing the raiders in the core of your base. Hence, you could kill them from behind, especially when they're top downing. Making that really, really good. Now going up, once again, going to the roof, you go past the chute and then you go into the so-called shooting floor level. Now you notice that no matter what, you will always um, be connected to this room right here, four doors. What do you do in this room? I'll leave it up to you. But if we go back to the chute, um, sometimes you go out into this area of the shooting floor and sometimes you go out into this side with triangles. This is more of like the simpler side and then we have the more complicated side on the other side. Now continuing, you'll notice that there's a drop down here with windows looking back into your own base. Now you wonder, why are these windows there? It's something I've started on, on some uh, base designs on my YouTube, but there are, I feel like never really properly showcased. Um, the reason I started it is because when Raiders raid you, especially with this base, they will always raid like somewhere under your shooting floor, AKA right there, right? The hole will be right there, the breach. And that makes these peaks really good, especially if you just want to hold ladders. So this is a very, very nice peak I like to have. Now it's connected, of course, to the external shoots. Now this base already has four shoots on the inside, although I do like to have them on the external um, side as well. Optional uh, peak on the roof. Now I showed already from the shoots on the inside of the base that there is ways to peak the roof right here, four of them. But then we have to have extra ones just because why not? And because they're so close to the shoot right there. Um, give a little bit more extra uh, visibility on your roof because why not? Now, the, the reason there's a ladder hatch here is just so that I'll show you on the, on the actual core. If we go right here, you'll notice the ladder hatch, which leads up to the roof. Now, you'll notice that there's a, there's a roof right here. Um, I like it because it makes, if there's a wall here, it makes... Um, your, shoot, your roof so much more like full. So that way it's not that full. Um, and some drop boxes, of course. This is your heli storage. This is where you have your vending machines type stuff. I would like to invite you to change this the way you want to, of course. Um, but you'll notice is that if Raiders blow this garage door and they top down you, all they have to do is hold that hatch and hold that hatch. Um, and there's no way for you to come up. Especially when they're all in here because you won't be able to shoot them when once they're in there raiding you. So... What did I want? What did I do? I created two additional ways up extra um, that lead up here. Now, of course, you could argue if you're getting raided by a Zerg, um, they can hold that one and that one too. But going back to the first argument, they can't hold that, that from in here. If they blow this door and they are like in the open here and they all run in and start top downing you, they can't hold those two ladder hatches as well. So you could potentially kill the guys holding those ladder hatches from here and then go through here to go up the ladder hatch and then try to make your place on the rest of the radar, of course. So it's nice to have those extra ladder hatches for extra mobility. Furthermore, on the roof, basic roof, literally nothing special. 
I like to have these extra towers with turrets. Um, just so they're like in a bit better spots and a bit more covered from, from outside. But of course you don't need to have them. Once again, this is like the total uh, version of the base. This is what you should have and what you should have everything upgraded in, in my opinion. But of course you could always leave things out that you don't like, that you don't want. And I really would want to force you guys to, uh, to do that. So that is a tour of the base. All right, now let's get to building the base. Do you need a flat spot? Not particularly, but it would be nice if you do get one. One thing that you should keep in mind is when building this space is the initial 3x3 three three shouldn't have a door on the bottom, unless that's what you want. Now this initial 3x3 three three, that's three tall, you should completely customize to your likings. The way how I show it is just one of many reasons you can build a 3x3 three three core and I would really want to invite you to be as creative as possible and never build something that's one-on-one -on -one the same out of a YouTube video. So with that said, let's start. And I'm going to be building straight away in the material it should be. Except for the HQM, I'll upgrade that manually. So for the bottom floor, just out of practical reasons, what you can do if you really want to get an easy starter going is just go with a 1x3. Now you can put the TC anywhere you like. And once again, this whole 3x3 three three section of the video isn't that important. Now continuing, you can expand. And what you can do is, if you have enough resources, you could build a, a jump up in twig on the outside. And then build the rest. Now jump down would be in a corner. Doesn't have to be. And um, yeah, you can close the rest of that in. Leaving the base like that. That is your initial starter. You do need to jump up, but not it's not that big of a deal now, if you want to continue and go for the second floor what you can do is door right here door right there and then put walls all around now this part is a bit uh you should you should pay close attention to this part if you want this but what i like to have is an actual peak down into the way down into the core it, it creates some nice angles so what i like to do is have a window there and then you could have a um, ramp and you put two boxes on that for drop boxes and close that in and then put a half wall on the top there. Frame right here, frame right here. You close this part completely in because these should be a bit like airlock so there's more doors. This is your way down and right here will be your way up. And that could be a place for furnaces or whatever you want. Now close that in and you leave these two open. Now once again, you could have a um, stair right here just so you can get in and out of your base for now. What you can alternatively do is already upgrade this and do a uh, do a half wall in twig, of course. Like that. Because that triangle is going to have to be there eventually. Now continuing for the third floor. This is a little bit complicated if you want to do uh, what I do. I like to have these roof peaks. But they are a little bit complicated to build. If you want to do that, you want to start with two half walls and two windows on top. You want to place this roof the latest you can. Do not place it unless you're done. Now we continue and you actually continue going around with half walls. Put more uh, windows on top. Do not put these frames. Do not. So don't. <laughs> Very important. But you can put them here. You can put a floor there. And you can put a... Um, square frame there that that is allowed and then put two low walls here and close that off now for the roof you can actually just place it from below you just place it like that and like that what you can do on the bottom here if you want is leave a half wall open and replace it for a low wall and put a box in there since there's a bedroom here you can actually access to an uh, to an extra box using the space a little bit better now continuing what you want to do for the rest is on the two middle parts we put two frames like that and then we go continue going around with walls and we continue going around with floors on top now this is your initial starter this is this is what you should have at at the end of day one if you're really not grinding in a way uh, nice thing about this is you have roof peaks kind of in a way in your little starter bad thing about these roof picks is that they are pretty open anyone landing on your roof can like look inside your base or at least your third floor so keep that in mind now going back here um you'll notice that this floor right here is again the uh watch down right there and if there's a embrasure right there 
this becomes a really sneaky angle you could jump down in and just shoot raiders potentially because this is the only way in and out from your core again it's also pretty easy for raiders to kill you now from here let's start with the outer ring what you want to do just like a normal three by three ring is go with triangles on um, on all sides like that remove this go with triangles now for now if you want you could put a furnace as your jump up it it is what i would recommend because it is pretty easy to to jump up like there alternatively you could also put a ladder or if you're you're already super rich you could put a ladder hatch straight away but i know some people don't like the ladder hatch there so you might as well just leave it like that for the entirety of the wipe now continuing with the ring what you want to do is go out with a triangle a square and then a triangle from the right one from the right triangle from the inside on the other one it doesn't even matter which one you do you could do um this one too and basically creating these two triangles you want to continue that with a square on the corner and you want to do that on every corner now once you're done with the corners you're gonna wall in the middles and you're gonna decide where on which corners you want your race into the base now i'm just gonna pick this one and you're gonna wall in the rest except for that one put a window there so the next corner doesn't have a way in and then this corner has a way in again with the same layout this one doesn't that's the logic here now on this bottom part you want to create an airlock right there and you want to put a door here which will function as the shoot later you do the same on the other side on this one where there's no door out you put a double door frame and a wall right there for now and the same again like that and here the same again for now now continuing you could do uh, simple. Just go on the outer, outer walls and just keep going up. And you do that once and then you do that a second time. So one more on top like this. Now, of course, once again, I would like to uh, mention you should probably uh, look at the example of the base before you... Uh, build it one-on-one -on -one because those walls should be metal eventually but i hope you can understand that yourself as well now going with the front doors what you want to do is place a floor above the airlock and a floor above that one now here we do a door and a, and a wall right there with a the frame this one don't seal that in and like that now continuing with floors again and here we put a full wall with a window in this case and then another full wall and up here we do a, a triangular ladder hatch if you have it already now here we need to do a jump up with a frame and then a, a floor now that's one corner you do the same on the other side with the other front door but then on the sides that don't have a front door we create the airlock or the the chute there same thing again close that in put a window there um, in this case you could or uh, you put a wall there again sorry and then continue to shoot wall this in uh, wall this in put a frame there a window there actually forgot about the frame for now and put a frame like that and then put the frame i mean and then the floor and then the uh ladder hatch here now that's one is that one is for the door variant that one's for the non-door and you do the same on the other side now continuing with the actual peak downs this is a, a pretty easy step for me but to a lot of people this might be complicated what you want to do first of all is from the bottom here on each middle section is uh, in this case i like to have windows because it's the jump up gives you a bit of visibility um, and then full walls and you do the same on the uh, other side where the jump up is and then uh, full walls and wall that or like close that in but now for the uh, other two sides where there's no jump ups into your core, you just want to put frames, full walls, and then on this one, put a floor, make sure that's metal, and then two windows. And this part is a little bit tricky. Put a floor there, half wall there, frame there, floor there, frame there, and then remove this, this part. This frame keeps up this triangle because it can't be connected to anything else because it can't be connected to the walls, can't be connected to the frame. So we have a jump up there, which is your initial jump up. But these you close in, um, once again, also in metal. And you do the same on the other side. And once you've done that on the other side, you continue your peaks. Uh, the most basic way you could do peaks. Now, some people don't like these because you can actually fall through. Some people like that part about it. Uh, since we have the shoots, what we can do is using siren lights, we can uh, make it so you cannot fall through. That's what I would recommend. 
Now, continuing in stone, simple again. We just go all the way around with walls again, creating kind of like a, a closed or like closing this whole floor in. But this is pretty straightforward. And I'm prioritizing this over the externals because I want to have inner peaks, just in case you get early rated. Put a single door there with a frame and a wall. And a single there, door there as well. Actually, um, it depends what you want to do. I like to do double doors for the bedrooms. That way, uh, I can just tell my teammates, hey, on the peak downs, don't go in double doors. They're all bedrooms. Um, and then leave the single doors for purely the shoot, which is like the way to go. Especially if you want to go to the roof. So that's why there's a double door, single door there. Of course, you can achieve the same thing by uh, just smartly using skins. Now, continuing, we can close that in. And of course, not this one. Although we could put a second ladder hatch. Now, what I usually do is I'd never put the ladder hatches, if they are, like, directly above each other, the same direction. Because it makes it really aids when you're going from below. Um, so, I like to always stagger them in a different um, position. Makes it a little bit easier. Now, continuing, put a ladder hatch on each side. Once again, you could have that just be ladders in the beginning if you, if you need gears. Now, what we want to do as well is we're going to close in the uh, peak downs. You could decide to do this, but since the half wall two things, the peak things are uh, like that, you want to do frames right here if you want to segment it. I know I had, I didn't have that on the showcase, but uh, yeah. Half wall discontinuing. That's, this will be a bedroom with um, two chests there, two chests there, two beds in the middle. And close that in completely. Now, um, the rest speaks for itself. Literally just fill in the rest of the roof. Now, most people would say at this point that they would want to do the externals. And I agree. But if you're afraid of getting raided, you should be doing the externals. Uh, like, basically, when your 3x3 three three is two, two stories tall. Just so you don't get uh, griefed. I mean, if you're afraid of getting griefed. But if you get to this stage, you might as well finish this top part. Because if you don't, uh, and someone does land on your roof, they can simply just hold ladder hatches. And there's absolutely no way of you killing them. Unless you let it out from the outside or kill them from like outside far away, which is not that hard. But, you know, I just wanted to mention that. Uh, so what you could do alternatively is um, literally just build the um, the peaks to the roof straight away. Um, it's not super practical. It does cost you extra stone, but it leaves you with a peak that you don't, cannot do anything with because it's too high for now. But it leaves you with this door right here that uh, makes it so... Raiders can't um, directly, you know, hold the ladder hatches. Alternatively, you could also uh, literally just place this if you want to. Uh, this wall and this door. Uh, make sure you have this door placed. Now, you can say, yeah, why would you do that? It's still open. Well, if anyone lands on the roof, they're not going to have enough people to watch the ladder hatch each. And you can basically come up one with still having some cover at least. Um of course, don't place that wall. Place that wall. So, sorry. It has to be like that. There cannot be a wall right there. In importance, you do not. So, you can either do that or this or none. It depends. But let's get ahead and build the externals. Now, for the externals, it's fairly easy. We're going to be using a white cap method that I have featured in a previous video, which you can see on the screen right now. Also, we're going to be uh, using a pretty simple disconnectable TC method. I've also make, made a video about how to properly do external TCs, which you'll see on the screen right now. The external TCs, there's four of them. We're going to do the exact same on all four uh, sides. So what you want to do is do a square from your initial... It doesn't matter, one of the two. Then two triangles and another square, followed with three half moves. So that is two. That is three. With a triangle at the end. Remove everything except the triangle at the end. And then from the triangle at the end, build back with squares. All the way until you reach this point right here. And you put two, um, uh, three triangles. Remove everything back there. Leave these three. Make sure they're metal. From here, you want to do um, square triangle, square triangle. Like that. That's your, this is your initial white gap. Um, so on two sides, you want to do... Um, the shoot's going up. On two sides, you don't. So, I say on this one, we do them. Um, and that will leave your white cap like that. With a door frame. Like that for now. And then, not on this side. But then again on that side. That's what you do. So, we stagger them. 
Let's continuing. Um, with the disconnectable, I'm gonna be doing a fairly simple one. We're gonna do a square connected to the three triangles here. And a frame. Then we're gonna do a half moon followed with a square and then three triangles, right? Put a half, uh, two half walls right there. Full walls here with a door. We're gonna put the TC for this right there with a window in front. Close that completely in. Place a window on top if you want to. For, for now, we're placing a uh, frame there followed with a uh, square frame followed with triangle frames. Now, we remo remove every single one of these foundations and voila, we have our uh, disconnectable TC. As you can see, it is disconnectable. You don't actually have to do that. You just do it like that. So disconnectable, same on the other side, same on these two sides. Right, now for the two sides with the chute, um, actually for all four sides, let's do that first. We're just gonna build up with frames until we reach this floor, which is one floor under the shooting floor. Same goes on this side, except for the side where there's not the uh, chute going upwards. You wanna do just frames continuing. Where this thing is, you don't. Um, and you wanna continue with stone, or you wanna continue this chute until you reach this floor. Now here, you wanna do two windows followed with two frames on the side and then here what you want to do is create a half wall triangle followed with a ladder hatch frame followed with two floors that um, should be metal followed with uh, more half walls actually so we're just going to close that in like that for now in metal i'm going to go out here with a square and then a triangle and like that too and close the rest in and we'll we'll leave this white gap crack here and we have this peak backwards here now on the other side, where we don't have that, we simply uh, just fill this in. And we do a square at the end again. The reason there's a square here, it might look a little bit stupid, but it's so we can connect these corners. Like that. Now continuing on the corners, what I do is for extra stability for now is place two frames like that. And same here. And then um, continue just so you can put this 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 door. Same here. And then for the rest, we literally just go around with uh, frames everywhere. Or I mean uh, windows, sorry. Right there. Like that. Now what we can also do real quick is uh, just finish the roof peaks. All four of them, just so they're done. Because why not? Kind of triggering me that there's only uh, two of them. Or one of them. So let's just finish that real quick. Like that. So we have the four roof peaks. And of course, there should also be a door on all four for now. Just so it's secure. Now, um, continuing. What you can do on the corners for now is uh, just place the triangles. And the same goes here. So uh, we, we just split that off. And actually, you'll notice that you don't have enough stability for that. That is perfectly fine. Now for the layout in here, um, I recommend you follow what I do. But of course, you can do whatever the hell you want. Um... We're just going to do two half walls here where the uh, triangle shoot is. Followed with two frames there. And you want to do floors on top of that. Like that. Followed with uh, half walls up here. Around closing that in. And then do a triangle frame there. Because there's this ladder hatch which I showed in the tour. Like that. Same on the other side. Now on this side we don't have that. Obviously. Uh, what you also want to do is put two frames here. And put two frames here. They're going to have to be there regardless. I like to have that frame here in the middle. Uh, same goes here. And then put two frames on the square sides of your shooting floor. Followed with the same on this one. So we have something. You should have something like that. We can continue this one with a wall. And the same goes here. So there's a wall on each side. Now for the way into the uh, shooting floor. I like to have two doors like that. Followed with walls. Which is the uh, short side. Let's just call it like that. And on these, we do the same, but we only have enough for one wall. On these sides, we just continue going with frames around. For now, you can put a frame there or not. I like to have a single door there, creating a tiny bit of an airlock, kind of. And for the rest, um, that's pretty much it. On the side where um, we have the window, or this one, it doesn't really matter. You can have your ladder. You can also do it on all four. I'm just going to do it on one. And you might notice you have not enough stability to place it. Just go and start from here. And you should be able to uh, to place it if you go from the outside. So you notice you can place it with the ladder hatch there, which is your initial roof access. Then you close it off the rest of the roof, pretty much.
It's important what I want to mention with the white gaps. That what I like to do is I always follow, and it's a golden rule also for multi TCs. You always follow what's below. Um, never mess mess this part up right here. You, you notice you can't place a frame right there because there's the wall on the opposite side right there. You can only place the frame right here, following the wall below. Um, you don't want to get any misconfusion with that. If you if you mess that up, there's not really any good solutions to that. You you just want to avoid that. So. I just wanted to specifically um, clear that out. If you want all your roofs metal, you can. It's pretty cheap to upgrade the metal, so uh, why not? Now, all we have left to do is the roof. Shorter vision here. I noticed something uh, that I did wrong. You do not want to have the ladder edges on the side where you have those window peaks. You actually want to have them right here. Um, where there's the short, the B variant of the white gap. Um, because of the way... We want the ladder hatches to be inside of the base, basically. And that this is the only way. So, um, yeah. Frames there for the uh, vending machine. Two walls like that. Followed with a wall in the middle. And then the two roofs. Uh, followed with two frames or window, whatever you want. And followed with... Uh, actually, that should be a window. Yeah. Closing that in. As you can see. Now, continuing on each corner. We want roofs. And then, of course, here we go all the way around. And that is the roof. A couple things left, but I like to call these things optional. If you don't want them, just don't have them. Because it's all extra upkeep that you might not want. So, uh, yeah, simply said, on the two sides where you don't have to shoot, you could initially create a compound bedroom. Or you can do that with full windows. So you can have to do something like this. And what you can do as well is on top of the, that compound bedroom, just go up with frames. Now what you're gonna have to do is in the middle here is go up with two frames as well uh, and two floor frames as well just so we have enough stability up here to connect the triangle a half wall and another triangle and we have a turret pot same on the other side if you want that do it if you don't you don't now going for the windmill towers i like to go at least three more high but you'll notice there's not enough stability sometimes not all the times but if you have that issue place a floor frame there and continue going up with frames alternatively they also place a floor frame there and you should have enough stability to place the windmill tower. I would like to note this as well. That it is quite... You see I have the problem right here. It is a little bit expensive. Because it is quite a bunch of frames that are added to the main TC. So um, if you don't want that. I would recommend to do your windmill towers on the external TCs. Furthermore. In terms of turret placement and all that jazz. Um, you should really just do whatever you think is good. I like to have these turrets. You could argue they barely have any vision. So they should definitely be turrets that you place later on if you do get rich. Um, alternatively, you could put a turret here for the jump up. Or you just have a ladder hatch and a turret or whatever you, help you want. Those turrets right here are uh, pretty good. Because they are the only thing that's between your main loot and um, the outside wall. So I recommend that. Alternatively as well, what you can do is create turret pots in the compound looking back towards your base on the ground. But yeah, just as always, there's a bunch of things you can add yourself and I would really want you guys to do. I just want to uh, show you this variant. But of course, there's a million other variants and I hope I can inspire you to, uh, to build your own. Now that was it for this video. I hope you guys appreciate the sharing of this 3x3. It's nothing super, super crazy and something super, super fancy. But I have enjoyed building this base myself in some recent wipes that i played one thing to notice as well and what i experienced i built this base with people that were live streaming and were getting stream sniped when you're playing in that style you definitely need to be quick with what you're building and you can't build anything too too crazy so especially for that reason this base turned out really great now if you want to see more make sure you're subscribed if you like this video make sure you let me know in the comments if you end up using the base make sure to let me know feel free to join my discord Share pictures. If you have questions as well, just join there. Send me an ad or just write in there. There's a bunch of people in there always helping um, to reply to people. Definitely recommend to do that if you're newer to building or if you simply cannot figure something out. Now, thank you all for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Take care.